Hi, and welcome to the Engaging People podcast. This is Charles Rogel, I'm a senior consultant here at DecisionWise. I'll be moderating today's discussion. Joining me today is Christian Nielsen, uh, our Vice President of Consulting Services here. Hey, Charles. Today we're going to be touching on um, kind of a foundational topic uh, in this series of topics that we're talking about in terms of good management behavior. Um, and this one is simply on trusting employees. And, and the way we'll set this up is there's two questions that we use to uh, measure uh, kind of the level of trust that employees experience in the organization on our employee surveys. One is simply, this company trusts me to do my job. And another one, another one is about their direct supervisor. So it says, my, I trust my supervisor. So we're trying to measure this on two levels um, to get this basic foundational understanding of whether employees feel they are trusted, whether they trust their manager, um, so, so Christian, to kind of start this off, why does um, trust even matter in the organization? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. You, you know, we at DecisionWise use a model of uh, magic, engage, or excuse me, engagement magic. Yeah. Uh, magic stands for meaning, autonomy, growth, impact, and connection. Uh, these, these elements that are, are necessary for employees to find engagement in their work. The, the A in magic is autonomy, and a key part of autonomy is a, a feeling of trust. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's on people's minds. It, just this last month, I saw uh, two articles uh, that kind of tied into this in an interesting way. That were one was from the Wall Street Journal and one was from Inc.com, and both of them were about um, different ways your boss is spying on you. The, the <laughs> Inc.com was 19 sneaky ways your boss is probably spying on you in 2019, <laughs> um, and that might be a little bit uh, clickbait, but it's also things that are employees think about in terms of am I trusted and um, uh, are people you know, surveying me yeah, <laughs> or right. watch, watching me because they, they don't trust me. Um, our CEO here at Decision Wise wrote a great article. Um, uh, it's on our website um, called Trust is the Oxygen of the Employee Experience. And I think that's a really great way of putting it. We need trust uh, for for engagement to occur. And it is it is the, the oxygen that, that's necessary for any positive employee experience. So what are some of the causes, I guess, employees would feel like they're not trusted? What, what are the bad things going on that erode trust? That's a great question as well. And uh, one thing I find is a lot of times it's things that I, I think have really noble intent to begin with mm-hmm. that ultimately cause um, people to feel like they're not trusted. Some some good examples of that would be anything that's kind of around employee surveillance. So yeah. we might start out uh, surveillance or um, surveillance is a, a word I use, but some something where we're watching employees or trying to capture some metrics for operational efficiency. But sometimes that evolves into where we're not either communicating why we're measuring those or how we're using that data, or we ultimately use that data uh, to uh, kind of inappropriately manage people uh, versus just try to in- improve the, the organizational or a process. So mm-hmm. an example of that would be, uh, I worked with an organization a while ago that had GPS in the, some of their trucks. They were an organization that had these uh, different trucks that had to run routes and things like that. And I, I think initially the, the reason behind the GPS was to monitor and try to improve efficiency and things like that. But it got to the point where if, if a driver took a turn that was not uh, pre-scheduled, they'd get a walkie-talkie or a, a CB <laughs> call where it's like, hey, where are you going? Yeah. And and that really minimizes the, the employee's autonomy, that sense, and they feel like they're not trusted. And sure. that very quickly uh, becomes a a problem and in, in limits engagement and, and just diminishes the overall experience. An, another area is micromanagement. Yeah. So as a manager, if I if I am just dominating every conversation and 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 just correcting everyone's work or leaning over their shoulders, those types of things, that lessens the how much they can bring to the role and and it minimizes their experience. And so I might the micromanagement might be, hey, I'm a perfectionist. I have high standards. I want to make sure we, you know we're reaching those things, but um, it minimizes that, that employee and, and diminishes engagement. Yeah, it's interesting. And I'm thinking, um, especially with, so there's so many new tools on the market where you can monitor, you know, internet activity, whatever, oh, yeah. any kind of electronic activity, GPS. And then there's such a great fear with companies trying to protect themselves, especially uh, security wise, about employees clicking on the wrong link in an email or, or doing so. I mean, there's so much education now that clients are afraid to kind of open any link I might send them to to, re, to, <laughs> to any kind of resource. Right. And so um, and so there's kind of a balance there that people are trying to strike where you're not feeling like you're so monitored, but at the same time you have some freedom 
uh, to do stuff, do your work. Right, right. And, well, in, in those articles I mentioned up front, they talked about some kind of scary things. And I hopefully, hopefully these aren't happening at a majority of organizations. But there's things like monitoring how much time people are logged into, you know, internal systems or mm-hmm. external systems, uh, how quickly they're responding to emails. All of these things you can quickly see how you feel like okay, Facebook but, usage time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm in trouble if that one's being monitored. But no, the the it, the Big Brother's watching. Yeah, and and that's not a, an exp- uh, an environment that's conducive to, you know, people wanting to engage. And, you know, there's certain times where those those things are necessary, high, yeah. high security type environments. But a lot of environments, that's, that's overkill, and, mm-hmm. it, and it sends the wrong message to our employees. Um, you know, another thing that's interesting is um, – it causes distrust would be th- the way a manager delegates. Yeah. Um, if if I only give special assignments to a few people, that tells the other people that I don't trust them to do that that mm-hmm. type of work. Now, uh, that doesn't mean you know send out assignments to people that aren't you know ready to do it or are incompetent or those types of things. But it just makes sure we have to keep that in mind that we're sending an unintended message and that we need to accompany that with some communication around, hey, I'm giving this assignment to Charles and not to Jake because Jake, you know, here's the, the few things that I want you to work on and then we'll we'll start working on these assignments for you as well. Or that, you know, just being aware of little things that are that seem seemingly um, innocent, uh, employees can kind of un- start to assign yeah, meaning to because managers kind of create their favorites maybe unconsciously in a way and they just think it's easier i'm used to it i'm busy i'm trying to get this done quickly right you just do it and they don't even think twice of how that might impact others right or even not delegating if i try to mm. take everything myself i don't trust anyone to do yeah, this that's type, true this type of work and um so it's, it, there's a lot of things to, to to look at and especially just paying attention what message are we sending through inaction as, mm-hmm. as well um, other things such as, you know, looking for in-group, out-group, and are we keeping secrets or, uh, you know, uh, we're not as transparent as we should be or we're only transparent with a few of our team members, that type of thing. Just watching that and, and uh, being equal across the group makes a big difference. Yeah, and, and it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily mean treating everyone the same, but it does mean being a little bit more consistent yeah. in how you treat. And so there's clear expectations. People understand what the – what the game is, what the strategy is. Exactly. Um, so then on the flip side, how do you work to build trust? Well, one thing I think, uh, I think a lot of distrust happens when we just don't have enough interaction with people. So mm-hmm. one of the, the simplest things is just holding regular one-on-ones, I think makes a big difference. Um, and just making sure you have that individual contact with people. Um, something else uh, I think a manager can do to, to really build trust is, uh, not try to create an illusion of perfection with yourself. Be, hold yourself accountable to mistakes you've made and, and be willing to be vulnerable mm-hmm. in front of the group. If you, if you make a mistake or a bad call, it uh, doesn't mean uh, beat, beat yourself up or you know, flog yourself or anything like that, but be real and authentic and, and, and um, let the team understand and see that. That makes a di- big difference in helping them feel like it's, it's a safe place for them to be vulnerable and, and uh, open around mistakes and things like that. And it, it, a nice environment to build trust. Um, if you're a micromanager, uh, <laughs> look for opportunities to, to bring that back and, yeah. and not, not completely uh, control all of the details yourself. Give people room to grow and development and own their work and, and demonstrate trust that way. Um, another interesting area sometimes is around competency and, and depend- dependability. Um, we might trust people if we feel like their uh, agenda is, is kind of hidden or, or they're, they're acting in self-interest and things like that. Another reason we, we might not trust someone is just a lack of dependability or competency. If we don't feel like someone's going to pull through for us and we don't yeah. trust them, we might like them as a person and, and not not necessarily be worried about some kind of ethical thing, but in terms of just are they able to do the job and, and will they consistently deliver that those types of things. So watching that in ourselves and also being able to coach and communicate that to others yeah because uh you get burned once and it's hard to kind of it it takes a while to kind of build that trust up yeah people have a long uh, a long memory and it's it's much easier to keep trust and uh, and to strengthen trust than it is to rebuild it once it's lost and i've uh, one of the thing i was thinking of as you were talking about kind of holding yourself accountable or admitting mistakes is you know being personable Uh, i see some managers trying to be more professional with their direct reports and kind of um 
you know, not talk about personal things. So they kind of keep their, their private life separate from their work life and to the detriment of kind of building relationships and trust. And so it's important, I've seen, to be able to talk to people about not only, you know, your, their weekend, but your weekend and what you did or your family or what's going on so people can kind of relate to you and feel like they uh, know you a little bit better um, and can trust you with their, their whatever personal life too if, they, if they'd like to. So. Right. I, I think that's a really great point. We, we trust people and we feel like we know them a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and, and getting to know them is not just knowing the quality of their work, but just getting a little more comfortable with each other as human beings. And mm-hmm. so those personal touches go a long way. And that's a real concern also for um, uh, remote teams. More yeah. and more, we're, we're not in the same office. And how do you, you stay connected and build trust uh, across um, you know, different states, different countries, time zones, those types of things? And it, it can take a little extra effort. Agreed. Uh, well, great. Anything else that you'd like to add on trusting employees or building trust uh, with employees? No, just a good opportunity for me to tell you, Charles, that I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's a pleasure uh, talking about this. Likewise. Thanks, Christian. Thanks, everyone. And join us again on our next podcast. <laughs>